good evening sir sir good evening good evening santosh can you hear me santosh is there hi 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 Manjanath? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm able to. Yeah. 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 I think I can speak now, Nitesh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Santosh, uh, Manjanath, actually, I think uh, Sarah has not joined. Uh, can you call up, sir? Huh. I, was, I called him and told, reminded him around 15 20 minutes back. Okay. Hmm? So, phone Madi Okay. 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 Meanwhile, uh, welcome Ashok Sen Gupta. Ashok Ji, can you hear me? Ashok Ji, can you hear me? Ashok Sen Gupta here. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, good evening. I can hear everybody now. I can say everything is sorted out. I think. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. I can. I can now um, uh, see every. I can see and I can show my video also. Sure. 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 Okay. Fine. Okay. Welcome, Ashok. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Ashok ji, just our uh, uh, keynote uh, trust will be delivered yeah. by uh, Sari Dev. To join, we will be sir, waiting sir. for him actually. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, Sari is still not there.
there is some network issue with the uh, uh, keynote address actually our senior officer actually uh, mm -hmm. just we are we'll wait for another four four five minutes let him uh, join and we'll start the session yes 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 yes, yes. Ha, 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 ha.
Sir, that is sir. I spoke to sir. He is uh, having some problem in finding. We'll start. Oh uh, yeah, he'll start, sir. He said uh, we can go ahead. Okay, okay, we'll start it. Okay. Just a minute. Oh. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, do, do one thing. Uh, let permit uh, uh, Malkade sir to come on video, audio also. Okay. Sir, yes. sir will deliver the uh, keynote. Okay. Huh? Malkade sir. Yeah. Yes. Malkade sir is there. Uh, because sir, uh, uh, Spartak sir is there. Hmm? Sure. I sure. think so. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, Shubhash Malkade, sir, is there. You can show video on audio. Malkade, is there in the video? You are permitted, no? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, our keynote address was supposed to be delivered by uh, our uh, additional PCCF uh, research and utilization, Sri S.T. Patak, sir, Dr. S.T. Patak, sir. But uh, with, due to network issues, he uh, is unable to join today's uh, webinar. So I am requesting uh, our additional PCC of wildlife, Sri Malkade sir, to deliver the keynote address. I welcome Malkade sir, additional PCC of wildlife, to this webinar on butterflies, the world, world of butterflies. So today's uh, keynote address will be by Malkade sir, and then the uh, guest of, uh, speaker is one of the uh, founder member of the Butterfly Club of Bangalore, uh, Dr. Uh, Ashok Sen Gupta and uh, take through the butterflies of uh, uh, world, of, world of butterflies here today and uh, i welcome uh, ashok sen gupta ji and uh, all the participants of uh, who are in this webinar i welcome all of you and then uh, the ce and uh, our uh, ict wing who is uh, helping us to uh, broadcast this uh, webinar through youtube and other social ne uh, network uh, networks uh, we uh, i thank them also i welcome once again all of you and uh, we know that actually butterfly uh, is one of the fascinating uh, uh, creature for all the uh, all of us actually right from uh, a small kid to the uh, age old people and all across all age, age groups there are different uh, uh, items to look at uh, from uh, and different things to deliver and uh, draw from the butterflies such a uh, active creature who always uh, keeps it himself, itself engaged and be very helpful to the human uh, being also to in various ways. Uh, I will not delay, uh, tell about all the things. I set away request to Sri Malkade sir to uh, take on the session and deliver the keynote address. Uh, Malkade sir, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Natesh. I think uh, I have joined as a stopgap arrangement uh, because uh, our expert, uh, Dr. Surya Dev Patrick, could not join uh, due to uh, problems that uh, network uh, problems because of network problems. But uh, everyone who has joined uh, this webinar, I welcome everyone. And I especially welcome Dr. Ashok Sen Gupta, uh, who has worked uh, in this. Uh, 
on butterflies uh, for a, a fairly long time and uh, he has been helping department also in doing the survey of butterflies and uh, is a keen member uh, for the butterfly festival that we do every year in uh, Dorsani Palya. I think uh, the example that we see in Dorsani Palya is uh, how a population of butterflies has increased uh, many fold after we uh, introduced host plants in the area, though it is it is a forest area, forested area, and we had large number of butterflies earlier there. And uh, with the help of uh, Butterfly Club, uh, we have been able to uh, certainly increase the variety as well as the number of butterflies that we see every year. And Butterfly Festival uh, that we conduct, Karnataka Forest Department conducts every year, has been a grand success. Uh, I also, all those who are participating, I will certainly invite them for this year's uh, Butterfly Festival uh, when we will have it in end of December or uh, in the initial weeks of January. Uh, butterflies, as we all know, are not only beautiful to look at, but they are the major pollinators that help us uh, in getting uh, in and are a major part of the food chain. And uh, all the young students, those who are uh, participating in today's webinar, they have, I think, uh, right from childhood, we have fascination for butterflies. And uh, certainly, the more of it uh, types and how we should identify it and how we can have a butterfly watching as a hobby, all these points will be covered in today's uh, this uh, webinar that we are conducting as part of Wildlife Week celebration uh, uh, as a prelude to Wildlife Week celebration. And we have already covered six topics. This is the seventh topic that today we are. Uh, today's topic is on butterflies. And I uh, now leave it to our expert speaker, uh, Dr. Ashok Sen Gupta, to please take it over uh, and uh, see that all the Participants' questions are answered and quiz is also taken care of. I, I thank uh, Natesh and all the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thanks for the um, keynote address, though it was a stop arrangement. Uh, your keynote address was uh, highlighted the uh, all the issues of the butterfly. And you know, uh, the conservation of each and every species uh, is very, very important because uh, all the uh, uh, creatures have some role, specific role in the ecosystem. And uh, uh, we, many of the users even we were unable to even know uh, what are the use that we have from that. And, and there is a uh, genetic pool is still unexplored. So now I will uh, request the uh, uh, guest speaker of the day. Dr. Ashok Sen Gupta ji to take over the session and uh, uh, PPT, I think he has the PPT, PPT with the uh, screen from uh, his own uh, computer. Uh, Dr. Ashok Sen Gupta, please. Thank you, Dr. Ashok. Uh, good evening, all of you. Thank you, Malkade ji uh, and Natesh ji uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, address you and uh, when I saw the list of uh, uh, members, many of our are familiar to me and uh, I will try to uh, take this session uh, by sharing my uh, presentation which I have uh, created. One second, okay. Uh, just let me share it. Okay. I am sharing the screen. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Can uh, my can my screen be seen? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, please. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Once again. So uh, uh, this particular uh, world of butterflies uh, talk, I have uh, uh, made it very categorical that since young kids will be joining this session, I will not go into very much of technicalities of identification of butterflies and you know uh, uh, taxonomic uh, references and 
various uh, scientific jargons that actually is uh, required for uh, somebody who is experienced with has a lot of experience in butterflies and is studying butterflies as a major in their uh, in their career so this is not a journey into that domain the, but it is a, a kind of overview of things uh, which are happening around and some beautiful uh, photographs of butterflies with explanations their behaviors uh, all those things will be uh, described here let us go into this uh, beautiful uh, journey a small but beautiful journey into the world of butterflies as you have, as you see in the uh, in the first uh, slide so i will be referring this butterfly and um, one and often uh, during my uh, course of uh, so this uh, so presentation so uh, butterflies okay uh, since the since mankind you know uh, came and started ruling our earth uh, butterflies has always been fascinating uh, human race uh, they have uh, been, you know, uh, uh, witnessing this flying jewels, which is uh, basically uh, this is uh, garlanding the name Mother Nature, and uh, also uh, this butterfly species is used for, you know, uh, you know, they have people, people have been collecting this uh, species, and you know, they are uh, keeping it and preserving it because they don't uh, get uh, destroyed easily. Uh, so they preserve it, and uh, and they're, they're, the first of all is the love for butterflies. Everybody loves butterflies. So and these uh, the tiny insects, you no, know, they play an important role in uh, the balance of nature, and uh, uh, they're one of the not major but one of the important pollinators, uh, and also they are uh, the part of this food chain where many other. Uh, life forms they survive upon uh, by feeding uh, butterflies okay and also uh, butterflies are a very very good indicators of a healthy environment that means i mean to say that if there are butterflies around you set assured that your uh, environment is not that polluted because butterflies cannot withstand polluted environments now uh, why a butterflies are valuable why they are valuable i have been always stating this because uh, like every other insects, butterflies have uh, their own right to live. So uh, we should not unnecessarily go and mingle with their lives and destroy their habitats and kill them. Uh, if, if it is required to collect the butterfly, it has to be done by legitimate person uh, who has the rights and the legal uh, authority to do so. Not all. Please do not disturb them. Watch them from a distance and enjoy them. So uh, that second point is connected to the first one. So these butterflies, they make your nature beautiful. So when you see a butterfly from child to as Sir was telling, mentioning uh, this, as a child, we always you know, uh, try, try to run after butterflies because they are attractive. And as an adult, we are trying to conserve them. Now, if, I, if we can just bridge the gap and make these children, uh, this, this young youth, to start you know, uh, loving nature by uh, more the thought process of conservation, then it will be uh, a, a very good goal achieved. So that is what uh, basically is uh, to be done. Now, butterflies also have educational values. A child can observe uh, the metamorphosis or the life cycle of a butterfly happening around in their backyard and uh, actually enjoy the micro habitats they live in and the way they transform from an egg to a then butterfly. And also butterflies have been uh, model uh, reserve, organism for, uh, organisms for research. So this is something which I uh, don't want to uh, elaborate more because a lot of researches are happening, ecological, uh, you know, population dynamics, uh, then uh, evolutionary biology, all those uh, researches are happening and they're, uh, this by butterflies play a very important role and as i, I told earlier butterflies play an, uh, eco, a healthy they are indicators of healthy ecosystem and you know uh, since butterfly watching uh, gives us happiness that happiness is basically uh, reciprocates into our healthy life so please watch butterflies and be happy and also of late it has happened over the past few years that many of the butterfly hotspots they are promoting ecotourism and they're targeting a butterfly enthusiasts to go and visit those places. That, that's how the revenues come and to the uh, people who are basically uh, having some knowledge about butterflies. They want to show others how butterflies are uh, watching and they, they want to show them how butterflies are there, which butterflies are there in that locality. And uh, many, especially in Northeast, it is happening in a very large scale. 
Uh, it is uh, slowly. There are a few uh, uh, private or, or op operators. They are also doing the same thing in Western Ghats. And in uh, uh, even uh, Karnataka Forest Police Department, as a as a part of their uh, no that that is corporate uh, citizenship or not, not that uh, their their uh, duty they they are also promoting this uh, butterfly ecotourism and butterfly work workshops, butterfly festivals kind of things, and not for generating income though. Now uh, let us come to something which is called how we differentiate between moths and butterflies. As uh, I, uh, it is known to most of you that uh, butterflies are nothing but evolved moths. Moths came into the world first before the butterflies, and there are there are huge number of moths as per as compared to butterflies. You know, you know, if I I'll go to the stats, you know, but I, I can tell you that there are about lakhs, 1.5 to 2 lakh species of moths. Maybe more, we don't know, but uh, butterflies are hardly in the thousands. So that's how uh, moths are uh, much diverse than butterflies, and uh, both of them come under the same order of Lepidoptera, uh, moths and the butterflies. And now, uh, how to differentiate? Because the first question comes to a child, how we can differentiate between a moth and a butterfly? Both are beautiful, of course. You know, butterflies, you know, the main difference is shown in the figure. You can see that moths are having uh, the a feathery antenna, whereas uh, the butterfly antennae are having a club at the tip of the antenna. That's the major difference between a butterfly and a moth. When you see them in the wild, the way you want to distinguish them is to see the antenna first. If you can uh, see the antenna, you'll make it out, make it uh, very easy for you to make it uh, differentiate between a uh, moth and a butterfly. And you see that skippers are also similar to uh, no, your butterflies. They are also butterflies, of course, but they're having uh, a hook at the end of the tip. So they are having clubbed antenna with a hook. That's how a skipper butterfly's antenna is different from a butterfly antenna. Uh, but both are butterflies, whereas the moths have a feathery antenna. You know, and uh, butterflies are generally day fall flyers. Butterflies are they fly during the day. Some of the butterflies, of course, fly during. Uh, during the, uh, the 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 period of uh, that uh, the dusk and dawn. So otherwise, most of the butterflies are day flyers. However, most of the moths are nocturnals. There are a few moths which fly in the day. There are a few moths which fly in the day. They are called day flying moths, and uh, they are so. Some of them are very beautiful. And in the Western Ghats, if you see the false blue tiger moth, uh, you will be surprised that it looks as beautiful as any other butterfly. It's a moth. Uh, <coughs> Uh, butterflies have thinner bodies and uh, as compared to moths oh and of course there are uh, some you know the borderline cases of skippers which have uh, thicker bodies uh, fatter bodies like moths but still skippers are uh, not moths uh, most of the moths are having very thick uh, abdomen and a thick body and uh, you know butterflies pupate in a chrysalis uh, whereas moths pupate inside them uh, they make the formation of pupa is inside a a cocoon. So there's a hairy, hairy cocoon or the silk cocoon. You have, uh, must have known about the silk moths, uh, where uh, they, the silk is produced from the cocoon of the the pupa of a, uh, a silk uh, moth. We get that's a silk moth and the mulberry silk moth. The silk moths are there, which produce those uh, those uh, those uh, silk. And that's how one of the differences between butterflies and moths. And uh, another, another very easy way to understand identify butterfly is to generally speaking, butterflies uh, actually they rest with their wings closed, except for the flats and uh, some skippers they have open wing. Even some butterflies also, other butterflies also sit uh, with uh, open wing. But generally speaking, uh, most of the butterflies they tend to rest with their wings closed. Whereas most of the moths, uh, majority of the moths they rest with their uh, wings open. That's how we differentiate between moths and butterflies. Now, uh, some statistics about butterflies. Uh, on Earth, we have got over 18,000 species of butterflies. Out of that, uh, because India is a very uh, famous hotspot, biodiversity hotspots in the world, India has got a uh, considerably good chunk of that uh, share of uh, Earth's butterflies, and we have undivided India had 1501 species of butterflies, as described by uh, Moore, who was uh, one of the British uh, no, the officers who uh, came to India and described 
almost every species which were present that time. So that was 1501. But what has happened because of the uh, partitions of uh, China, this Nepal and Afghanistan and Pakistan and other countries, uh, the that those those butterflies which are endemic to those areas have been removed from that list. Now we can say that we have got about 1400 plus species of butterflies in India. And if we uh, actually combine the subspecies level distribution, it can go up to 1800 and a little bit of uh, near about 1800 plus. And, and out of those uh, 1800 species, Western Ghats uh, has got 334 species of butterflies. 334 species of butterflies and uh, with introduction of uh, two three new spe uh, species uh, which were recently recently seen in the western guards okay and uh, uh, the state the karnataka has got 326 species of butterflies out of which i feel that it uh, the, the numbers can uh, still go beyond 326 it can go beyond that and uh, uh, we need to do um, uh, more work in uh, karnataka uh, but that we those type of work has been done more in Kerala. The Karnataka is now actually gradually picking up, and uh, because with survey permits and you know, uh, the Karnataka Forest Department helping uh, the NGOs to work with surveys, we'll, we'll surely find uh, more than 326 species of butterflies. Bangalore has got 174 species of butterflies, and there's a very good number. Bangalore being a moderately high altitude area with 900 meters, we have got 174 species of butterflies because of the urban greenery we have uh, in and around Bangalore. Now, uh, the butterflies are uh, basically classified into six families. Okay, the six families, uh, actually I will not term uh, those Latin names which are uh, given. I will uh, term them as the swallowtail butterflies, the yellows and white butterflies, the brush-footed butterflies, the blues, copper, and hair streak butterflies, the metal mark butterflies, and uh, duties and metal mark butterflies, and skippers and swift butterflies. I have given one one example of which the Papillonidae butterflies are the largest of all the uh, all the butterfly species uh, found uh, on Earth. Uh, there are one or two ex exceptions, but generally speaking, Papillonidae are the swallowtails are uh, largest butterfly species. In, on the on earth and they are called swallowtails because their tail looks like a tail of a swallow that uh, bird if you have seen a swallow bird that type of tail it has got that's why they are called they are called swallowtails but you will find that there are butterflies which are having longer tails we call them a sword tails so the swallowtails and sword tails are all uh, uh, you know uh, coming among the swallowtail butterflies and if you see that there's one butterfly at the left corner which is a blue mormon this blue mormon uh, doesn't have a tail doesn't have a tail, but it's, uh, it's still in the uh, family of uh, swallowtails. And uh, this, this because of swallowtails, they are called swallowtails because of not only uh, the, they are having a swallowtail, but there are other features of how the eggs are laid, what the shape of the egg, how they uh, basically, uh, you know, larval stage happens and uh, how uh, the pupa is formed. All those things uh, matter in the, in the consideration of of uh, this solitaire butterfly, not only that solitaire, all uh, the families, they have got specific uh, shapes and sizes of eggs. Now, next family is uh, the uh, yellows and whites. Uh, yellows and whites are basically mostly commonly found around you. You see around, first time you go outside your house, you'll see nothing but a yellow and white but, but, butterfly. The emigrants and the yellow, grass yellows which you find near your backyard and your near in front of your house, they comes in the under this family of uh, yellows and white. And the largest family is the nymphalidae family. Uh, they are called brush-footed butterflies because uh, the actually butterflies are hexapods. They are having six legs. Out of this, in nymphalidae or this brush-footed butterflies, one two legs are reduced. Those two legs are reduced uh, in males, especially in males, especially. That's why they walk only on four legs. They are having uh, six legs, but they walk on four legs. That's why called brush-footed butterflies. Then the smallest one are the blues. And uh, uh, we in Western Guards, we have got 102 species of blues. Even uh, the brush footed butterflies are equally same. 102 species of uh, Nymphalidae and 102 species of uh, Lysinidae are available in Western Guards. Uh, we have got Judies. We have got two Judies uh, in uh, in Western Guards. One is called the uh, suffused double banded Judy, and other is called the Plum Judy. Only two Judies are there. They are the metal marks of the Ryodenidae butterflies. And uh, we have got skippers, which are basically more look like a moth with their shape and size. 
but they have the club antenna and their behaviors and their ecology is a butterfly they're not moths so these are the six families of butterflies we have in our uh, country now butterflies basically are having four wings we come to the morphology of butterflies they're having uh, four wings and their wing wings are covered with miniature scales that's how uh, these uh, scales have got prism and this prism reflect and, and those uh, light properties, they give a particular color to the wing. Not only one color, they have got multiple colors. And their hexapods, except for the uh, those uh, uh, brush-footed butterflies where one pair of legs are reduced. Okay, the body have three segments, uh, the head, thorax and the abdomen. And they have got also the exoskeleton. Whatever the we see inside, outside the uh, outside the butterfly body is nothing but exoskeleton. That means the butterfly lives with a very feeble life inside it. That's why they are so they are so weak. So they have got a very feeble uh, life support system, and most of the body is nothing but exoskeleton. And they have got compound eyes and a pair of antenna. Antenna is used for sensing, as we know. Uh, and the most important organ of a butterfly is the proboscis, which helps the butterfly to suck nectar and other food material uh, from nature. That's how they survive using the proboscis. Now, uh, butterflies uh, may live up to one week or maybe one year, depending upon the species. The larger the species, the more the life uh, expectancy or the lifespan of a butterfly. And uh, uh, butterflies may have one or more than one brood per year, depending upon the species and the climatic conditions. And butterflies undergo this change of metamorphosis from uh, egg to larvae to pupa and then to the adult. This transformation from uh, larvae to the adult is called metamorphosis. This is a very interesting thing to observe for kids. You now they, they see that they get fascinated how it's happening. Uh, how uh, a larva is changing into a pupae and the pupa is, you uh, know, uh, after some days it, a butterfly comes out, that, out of that pupae. Uh, butterflies are very selective uh, for their host plants. They will not uh, touch something which is basically alien to them. So they will have very specific host plant and host plants are uh, basically very specific to the families and even subgroups of butterflies. And uh, uh, of course, uh, two butterflies can have same nectar plant but it, it is often uh, not possible for uh, two species to have uh, same host plants. But there are many species which share host plants. That is also correct. One of the very popular host plants which you find here in the city of Bangalore is the uh, Honge Mara, that current, how we say in Hindi and Hongami in English. Uh, this particular plant hosts about four to five species of butterflies. Even another butterfly uh, host plant is called Caparis. The Paris is a dry area species where it hosts about six to seven species of butterflies, even more than that. Uh, there are uh, you know, mistletoe, or you know, if you call them as uh, those honeysuckles or the Laurentini, they these Laurentas or mistletoe or honeysuckles, they host four to five species of butterflies, even more than that. Okay, and caterpillars may, may generally uh, feed on leaves and flower buds, and uh, some of them are poisonous. Uh, it's not poisonous, sorry. Some of them are uh, basically uh, no, carnivorous, they feed on mealybugs, especially one of the butterfly is the ape fly. It is known to feed on mealybugs. The mealybugs are white bugs which are found, uh, which are uh, found in uh, uh, in various plants and the ape fly goes and lays eggs there. And the larva of the ape fly also looks like uh, a mealybug. It's a bigger than a mealybug and it feeds on the mealybug. There are, that's how they are having the, so much diverse feeding habits. And they also, uh, no, they also uh, are sometimes tended by ants, some of the caterpillars of blues. I'll go to the next slide for that. That is called a symbiosis with ants. Uh, symbiosis is an inter interaction of between two organisms of different species. And caterpillars of blues, I told about Lysanidae, the caterpillars of blues develop special glands that secrete a nectar-like substance. And ants, uh, and enjoy them. In that return, what the happens, uh, the ants protect the uh, caterpillar. So that symbiosis has developed over the over ages and most of the blues, many of the blues, I say most of the blues, they have a symbiosis with uh, uh, the caterpillars, with ants. I, as, as you see in my uh, right, there is a uh, ant, which is a, a red weaver ant, which is having, uh, which is trying to protect the caterpillars of red spot. The butterflies uncommonly found in the cities and uh, outskirts of Bangalore. 
this is a butterfly uh, which whose which lays eggs on various types of plants having the weaver ant nest they are not selective to the <coughs> basically to the host plant but they are selective to the presence or absence of ant nest around so this is a uh, that red spot caterpillar now i come to some very interesting uh, facts about butterflies a uh, butterflies you uh, know has evolved over uh, over ages with uh, something called you know trying to protect themselves from getting eaten by other other species uh, some of the butterflies uh, show a kind of mimicry where uh, one uh, they see i'll tell you before i talk about mimicry mimicry uh, there is uh, there are butterflies like larvae which feed upon uh, poisonous plants like calotropus uh, aristolochia and uh, you know uh, and uh, this, this kind of uh, uh, plants which are poisonous in nature milkweed plants so those milkweed plants uh, basically secrete a poison which is eaten by the caterpillar and caterpillar transfers transfers the poison to the adult that way that particular butterfly species is basically unpalatable to generally their main uh, major predators the birds so those butterflies like you know, plain tigers uh, the blue tigers the, the common tigers they are all uh, basically even the crimson rose they are uh, they are unpredictable butterflies but you know, evolution has made us some female species of some of the butterflies as i see at the top left uh, that butterfly is called the danaid fly female which actually mimics the the, the, the that uh, plain tiger the plain tiger is shown at the top Uh, this is a plain tiger and this is the danaid fly this danaid fly female it almost resembles the uh, that color patterns of uh, the uh, plain tiger and this danaid fly is a uh, non poisonous palatable butterfly its male is quite different from the female it's black in color but here uh, this red uh, colored uh, orange colored butterfly it which is mimicking the uh, mimicking the plain tiger and not only mimicking the uh, plain tiger in colors and patterns but also in the flight pattern also you know this uh, poisonous butterflies tend to fly leisurely and those palatable butterflies have fast flight patterns so if you see a butterfly flying fast that means it is it cannot be eaten by it, it is it, it eatable and that means a, a bird can eat that that's why nature has given them the, the force and the speed to fly away but these females of danaid fly even the common mormon which is shown in the middle here yeah, this common mormon female uh, this common mormon female which is mimicking the crimson rose this is called as uh, this is called the mimicry a petisian mimicry which was uh, which was first you uh, know described by uh, mr bait which was a uh, bait was a scientist and he uh, d- d- he called it a petisian mimicry where a uh, uh, there is something called a, there is something called a, uh, a model and a mimic kind of relationship that between the two Uh, in your uh, right we have got a model which is the ant tiger on the left we have got the danaid uh, fly which is the mimic similarly we have got the crimson rose as the model and uh, we see that the common mormon is a mimic even common mormon has uh, two types of mimics or other three uh, that, that i will uh, try to discuss later uh, there is another mimicry called auto mimicry which is uh, very very uh, prominent in especially in blues where uh, the blues Uh, they rest with their uh, head still antenna still and keep wagging their tails and there are eye spots you can see at the back so if any predatory attack happens it happens on the back which is moving and the eyes and the the, the, the antenna and the heads are head are still uh, there is no movement when they are basking and the tail is continuously wagging and a bird or a predator may come and attack the tail due because of the movement and the butterfly may escape with narrow injuries to their uh, wings they can still fly away that's how its auto mimicry is shown in uh, many blues especially uh, is about mimicry now this food habits about butterflies you know butterflies are tend to feed mainly on nectar of plant flowers various flowers there are hundreds of flowers and thousands of flowers which are very good source of nectar and a uh, very common source of nectar in your in your locality is the lantern of which is a weed and it spreads like anything and butterflies are the uh, major contributors to this spread of uh, lantern across your city so uh, this uh, nectar sucking uh, butterflies uh, are there and apart from there there are specialized butterflies which love to uh, feed upon rotting fruits tree saps 
decaying flesh, dung, and dissolved minerals in wet sand and uh, and mud. Okay, this this is called mud puddling. This is a very common phenomenon sounds uh, seen in uh, wet patches near the river streams. I have got a photograph of on the, my right, which is showing a mud puddling of albatross butterflies in Western Ghats. They tend to congregate in tens of thousands together at one place and uh, do this ritual of sucking mud. This uh, sucking minerals from the mud. This uh, uh, sucking minerals from the um, uh, mud is required by the especially by the males, uh, which actually transfer that salt uh, the, from the minerals taken from uh, from that uh, that wet uh, sore sand uh, to the females during the mating. Uh, that that will be uh, actually helping in better fertilization of eggs. Even some butterflies, you know, uh, feed on alkaloids uh, actually secreted by some poisonous plants called uh, Crotolaria. And uh, you know, uh, this these alkaloids are basically uh, favored by the family of crows and tigers. This family of crows and tigers, which feed on alkaloids secreted by Crotolaria. Uh, when during the migration time, uh, this uh, we can see hundreds of crows and tigers. They are uh, feeding on total area and uh, heliotropium uh, near uh, the forest and the edges of the forest. Now I talk about habitats. Butterflies are terrestrial and mostly found in tropical regions. However, they are also found at altitudes of 6,000 meters in Himalayas. We find Apollos there at this altitude. Apollo is a butterfly which can survive at this uh, this high higher altitudes. They basically uh, are uh, papillonites or the swallowtails which are found at this altitude, this hostile uh, hostile environment where there is a very minimum amount of uh, vegetation available. And uh, uh, they are found everywhere except Antarctica. And uh, uh, you can find them from uh, from the, those hostile regions to your backyard. So they are found everywhere, almost everywhere. Now, uh, there is something called migration, which is a very, very interesting phenomenon, uh, which happens every year. Uh, and uh, there are seasons for migrations. In South, we have got the Daraini migrations, and that includes common crow, double banded crow, blue tigers, dark blue tigers. These, they migrate and uh, pre monsoons from Western Ghats to Eastern Ghats and return back uh, from Eastern Ghats to Western Ghats uh, in the month of September or October. So this is a, a ritual which happens like uh, which happens in monarchs and uh, in America. Uh, there is a famous and well well studied migration in uh, America. That is the monarch migration which happens from Canada to Mexico and Mexico to Canada. Uh, so the similar migration happens in Western Ghats and from Western Ghats to Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats to Western Western Ghats every year. And uh, we need to study it a very you know in a more elaborate way. Many more people are required for this study so hopefully some of you may join in future uh, to be a part of this uh, ritual which happens every year i am going to go you go and show you some uh, video of this uh, migration uh, which happens and you can see and enjoy the video this was prepared and, and, and by mr arun urs from mysore and uh, he is an avid uh, butterfly lover and a photographer and a wild naturalist. And he is doing some good work in Mysore. So there's something it is. Okay. You'll see the. You can see uh, this huge amount of uh, migration happening. You can see butterflies flying around, congregating. These are uh, dark blue tigers. They come in tens and thousands, and even uh, we can you know we cannot we cannot count them also sometimes. See how many butterflies are there on a single branch, and see their flights. This is something very spectacular. This happens every year. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for Arun for uh, sharing this particular video to me. Uh, now, there are other migrations that happen in Western Ghats. One of the famous migrations which happens in Western Ghats is the Albatross migration. 
which basically happens in the month of uh, January, uh, and it uh, they come down from the uh, that uh, heights of Brahmagiris to the plains of Kerala, and they come uh, with numbers. You you cannot, I cannot imagine uh, elevators. I've seen ten to fifteen thousand. I cannot count them numbers uh, sitting and mud puddling on the sands of uh, the rivers, streams in the Western Ghats. There are other popular migrations. Out of that, one very famous migration which happens is the migration of painted lady. The painted lady is the migrant which migrates intercontinental migrations. You know, four, five thousand, five thousand kilometers they migrate, and from one country to another country it goes. If they come to our uh, country also, even in Karnataka they come. They go up to Tamil Nadu and uh, at the Kanyakumari from Himalaya to uh, Kanyakumari, one butterfly that connects. Us is the painted lady. I'll talk. I'll show you the photograph a bit little later. So this painted lady migration also happens. They come every year during summers to uh, to breed in the mainland of a country and they fly back. That is an amazing butterfly which uh, which comes and uh, shows their uh, beauty beauty to us. Other than that, we have got uh, other minor migrations. Uh, migrants like uh, local migrants like common immigrants, uh, pea blues, poppins, spots hotels. Five bus hotels, painted sawtooths. These are the butterflies which uh, also perform uh, local migrations. Now, uh, uh, for your information, those who are new to butterflying, we have got something called the largest and the smallest. So, the largest butterfly is the southern birdwing, uh, which is having a wingspan of almost 190 millimeters. The huge butterfly, the female I have depicted here. Uh, the female butterfly of the southern butterwing, which is also uh, you know the state butterfly of Karnataka. So this butterfly is uh, the largest butterfly in our country, and the smallest is the uh, oriental grass jewel. Uh, this is the smallest butterfly, which we barely see. It is all around you in, in your grasslands, in your house, in your backyard. This butterfly is found, but you will not be able to notice it uh, if you are not that careful. It will be always there. It is the smallest butterfly. Uh, there is a similar butterfly which is called the uh, uh, African grass jewel, which is also is there. Uh, that is a uh, little bit larger than this, but both sizes are comparable, almost the same. Now, uh, there are some state butterflies. In, uh, in our country, out, uh, till now, five states have declared their state butterflies. And now we are uh, in a mission of declaring our national butterflies. I will request all of you to vote for that. So, Karnataka has declared the state butterfly, uh, the southern budwing, and uh, uh, Kerala have declared their state butterfly, the Malabar banded peacock. Tamil Nadu has recently uh, you know, joined that particular elite uh, uh, that group uh, in declaring the Tamil or Sahadri or Yoman as their state butterfly. Maharashtra was the first uh, state to declare their state butterfly as the blue mormon, and Uttarakhand has declared a Himalayan species called the common peacock. Uh, as their uh, state butterfly. And now uh, that uh, one uh, more butterfly is going to join this particular ranks, uh, Arunachal Pradesh has also uh, come out with uh, their state butterfly as the Kaisara Hind. Uh, Kaisara Hind is going to be the state butterfly of Arunachal Pradesh. The process is going on. These are the states, and many other states are also, I think, uh, because of the help with the help of NGOs and butterfly lovers, are going to actually uh, uh, declare soon. They are going to declare their state butterflies. Now, uh, let us come to butterflies. You know, uh, you see, uh, what do you want to see in a near a house? First, but you, first of all, you go out and you want to see butterflies. Uh, there are some common butterflies. The most common butterfly you find near your house is the lemon immigrant, which is the uh, which is shown at the top left corner. The first most common butterfly, the lemon immigrant. It is lemonish or uh, pale cream in color. Uh, there are you know, various you know, color coloration of uh, differences are there in uh, there are there are forms of uh, this lemon immigrant. But lemon immigrants are the most common butterfly which is found near your house. And the next one, which is the very common, is uh, the common grass yellow. It is found uh, any yellow which you found in your uh, nearby. There are of course more than one uh, grass yellows. One of the grass yellow is the common grass yellow, which is the most common butterfly, uh, uh, which is found near a house. There are other butterflies like the visible, <coughs> which is the most one of the prettiest butterfly and one of the contenders for the national butterfly. 
which is shown here it is also pretty common and they actually uh, they they come and uh, hover uh, over your uh, canopies and they come sometimes come down and nectar when you see them sitting and nectaring you will be delighted by its beauty uh, other two very common species which are found are this common jay and tail jay these two species of butterflies are basically uh, breeding on the false ashoka tree which are found in the garden city gardens and even institutions and schools is a very common tree even the champaka tree the champaka michaelia champaka tree they also breed on that these are very common butterflies volatile butterflies which uh, are basically cousins and sisters is tail jay and common jay they share the same host plant the crimson rose is also another very common butterfly seen especially in bangalore which is a solitary and uh, this is a scheduled one species which is uh, i know marked by the 1972 wild type act this is protected the highest protection level given to this species the crimson rose then we have got the plain tiger you will find them pretty commonly you know they will be uh, nectaring on uh, and on flowers and coming and breeding on the calotropis uh, giganticus uh, aa koi say in hindi i don't know the kannada name it is uh, the, the flowers are used for uh, worshiping the shiva idol this uh, this is a plain tiger and then comes the uh, common crow which is pretty common in the pre monsoon season you will find them in scores and large number because they tend to migrate from the western ghats these are the pretty pretty common butterflies which are coming is apart from there other butterflies are also there which are pretty common i'm going to show some of them in in around you there are uh, some tiny butterflies which are very close to your house but because of your incuriosity and uh your, your lack of curiosity you will not tend to see them now since you are attending this particular webinar you will be uh, now be more serious and curious about uh, seeing these butterflies to so my left uh, is corner is called the common cerulean which is pretty common and it breeds on the hungamea or the hunge mara tree the common pero which is another uh, pretty butterfly white colored it, it breeds on jisipas trees and is found very commonly in the around your backyard the pale grass blue also another it's having a sky blue color at the top which is very commonly seen around you in the grasses and the uh, sea blue which is a migratory species they come also and breed near your house you will find them very commonly uh, uh, mud puddling or sun basking or uh, feeding and nectaring on your flowers then we have got this common butterfly that again same uh, uh, the grass jewel or the oriental grass jewel pretty common in the cities but you will tend to uh, not to notice it and this butterfly is just the uh, red pero pretty common pretty pretty common but you need to have uh, the bryophyllium the calencho plant in your house if you can plant that how plant in your house you will find them coming and breeding and you can see and observe a beautiful life cycle happening for this red pero then we have got the dark grass blue which is smaller than the pale grass blue which is also pretty common and we have got the lime blue which breeds upon lemon plant and uh, that's also a pretty common butterfly these are the some of the blues i am not showing everything it is time constraint is there i cannot show you share everything there are other various resources which can help you and guide you to see uh, and observe the butterflies but these are the common things which i my choice i have selected them uh, because they are pretty common near you now city uncommon butterflies so in our bangalore all these eight butterflies are available but they are not commonly seen they are there around you not very rare they are abundant also but not commonly seen the blue mormon it occasional visitors to your backyard also and in your gardens you will find them the big huge butterfly fluttering uh, and just like a bird it will be fluttering around your uh, gardens is the blue mormon the uh, black raja is a canopy dweller this 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 black raja is a canopy dweller dweller it is a city butterfly it is found almost everywhere in bangalore where there are big trees they stay high up in the canopy so that's why they are not uh, visible so they occasionally come down and uh, feed upon uh, you know dead uh, insects crabs and uh, even uh, they they can sit or sit on human excreta this black raja the body baron which feeds on uh, mistletoe and shares the host plant with uh, butterfly below it the uh, peacock royal uh, this are pretty uh, uh, beautiful butterfly which uh, is found in the cities and it's very commonly found in bangalore but you have to have a keen observation to uh, see it and it is because 
it is uh, uh, stays mainly in the canopy and they come down the cordyveran come down to overripe fruits if you can uh, provide some fruit baits you can easily see them to continuously provide the overripe fruits to attract these butterflies and this uh, skipper is a, a grass demon it breeds upon your ginger ginger species plants and they are also pretty common in this, this during this uh, monsoon and post monsoon uh, season uh, the red flash and the straight flash these two flashes i have shown a red flash here the similar flash the straight flash, flash they are also pretty common but uh, uh, but uh, you have to have a special eye to oh, see these butterflies because you cannot uh, see them frequently on your backyard the anomalous nawab is also an uncommon butterfly uh, which is found in bangalore and city it's a city butterfly and we have seen them uh, uh, in jp nagar or the the, the dosanai palia uh, river forest and also uh, in north at my place where i stay at jalahali at the and the, the forest is called here is the uh, uh, that uh, sandalwood forest is a forest uh, and then we have got peacock royal which shares uh, the species with uh, body baron it's also pretty common it is uncommon but it is uh, for me it's common because i have an eye to uh, see them but for a newbie which has who have just uh, come to observe butterflies for them uh, the peacock royal will be something uh, uh, something to cherish upon okay or or to relish upon rather when they get get it beautiful butterfly southern butterwing officially uh, visits our the bangalore it is found mostly uh, it is not inside the city sometimes it is seen inside the city but outskirts you will find them dorasani palle has reported southern butterwing and bangalore university has reported southern butterwing Dalali, where I stay, I have seen the southern budwings. Nandi Hill, we have seen southern budwings. They are they are found, but they are solitary, and we cannot see them in numbers. <clears throat> and there are skippers. Skippers, I told you, they are the fast flying butterflies, which uh, which you barely see them because they will not give you a chance to uh, you to uh, see them and observe them keenly. They are very very agile and fast flyers. The most common skipper which is found in Bangalore is this. common banded all this common banded all breeds again on uh, the hunge mara the pungamia tree and it shares with uh, which shares with your uh, common cerulean and this common banded all uh, if this is season for their breeding you will see them see them you know sometimes there is outburst of the caterpillars and they will creep and crawl in your know, houses from the uh, pungamia tree which is near your house so don't be worried about the caterpillars then pick them and put them back in the tree they will pupate there that's how this common banded owl is very common they have got a very uh, skip common skipper it's the oriental grass dart which is found in the grasslands everywhere in the school uh, grassland if you go there you can find this butterfly this dog uh, this skipper it breeds on grass the dark palm dart which breeds on bamboo is also uh, a pretty uh, common and uh, they are found in the bamboo uh, actually areas where bamboo forestation is there Dorsani Palia has got uh, uh, a lot, a large amount of uh, these butterflies because the bamboos are there in that particular campus. Now, even I told you this uh, grass demon is found. Uh, it's a skipper which is found very common, and the African mallow skipper is a dry area species which is found in the outskirts of Bangalore. And we have got the common red eye which shares the host plant, the bamboo, with the dark dark palm dart. It is also commonly found. And then, and thus, this chestnut bob it breeds on grass. And it's a very common skipper uh, in Bangalore. And this one is something which is special. This is called the rounded palm red eye. This particular butterfly caterpillar is a pest to banana plantation. You must note it down that when you see a coiled, rolled up leaf of banana, there be a caterpillar of. This particular butterfly, which actually had uh, in last two years, has damaged considerable amount of crops in Kerala, the banana crops. This has been introduced by some uh, accident in Western Ghats. Earlier, it was not there. It, in last three years, it has you know, come and joined the club of the butterflies of Western Ghats. Now, the Karnataka has got some beautiful forest butterflies because the Western Ghats. we have got the major share of western ghats in karnataka and we have got some beautiful butterflies and one of them is the uh, southern blue blue wattle 
or it is now being called as serpent on terror whether graphene terror on i'm using the older name is is called the narrow banded blue bottle it is found in uh, western guards as a very common butterfly but it's a forest butterfly and this malabar banded peacock majestic butterfly it's so majestic and you will see them in flight you will be wondering the change of color patterns on the wing this particular blue pattern turns to green and then back to sky blue when it is in flight you will get uh, mesmerized to see it this is out of the three peacocks which are found in the western guards apart from this malabar banded peacock we have got the paris peacock which is shown just below it uh, and there is only called the dry area species called the uh, common banded peacock i have not uh, included here because of the scarcity or lack of time if i uh, try to discuss each each and every butterfly it will be difficult is another butterfly i told you that's a short tail a solitary butterfly but the tail is very long it's a river butterfly it's it comes uh, uh, it is basically okay seen uh, pre monsoon in the uh, in the, the slopes of the that western guards and in the river in areas and we have got this uh, common mime which is also found in the western guard forest and or sometimes in the, the townships also of the uh, coastal area we'll find this uh, and you know uh, coming and breeding on uh, your uh, what is that your cinnamon tree this particular uh, common mine the paris peacock as i told you it's a river butterfly it's a beautiful butterfly and you will see them in numbers mudpuddling in the river and areas the red helen is a very big butterfly uh, and it's also on in the western guards they'll fluttering around sometimes they come down for mud puddling as you can see that it is setting and sucking uh, minerals from the soil i can i could have uh, i can i see you see out of this uh, this six species only one is setting on the flower and you will not find them mud puddling i have not they are not known to mud puddle the malabar banded uh, peacock others you see that all the solo tail butterflies are setting on mud so they are only pos there is uh, the possibility of photographing them is only possible when we go near the river streams and they come down to suck minerals then only you can photograph them and this guy will rarely give you chance to photograph because it comes down at a high speed nectars and goes back so this is uh, luck the wild luck i got a photograph of this butterfly then uh, there are other butterflies of the brush footed butterflies of beautiful butterflies the blue admiral the clipper the cruiser the sergeants the tamil cat's eye and the malabar trinim these are my uh, one of my my best choices of butterflies which are big majestic and and they are they are beautiful when you see them in the western guards you will be you know admiring them like anything you know you get mesmerized to see the flight of malabar trinim which is shown at the bottom right corner this flies like a kite this flies like a kite fluttering in front of you at uh, about a elevation of 30 to 40 feet and you just keep on observing them so they are the pride of western guards this malabar trinim they in kerala they call it as the bana devata that much of uh, that the, that much of uh, that uh, importance this butterfly has to the people who lives in western guards okay these are some uh, very beautiful species of butterflies found in western guards is the brush footed and some very very beautiful and cute blues i have selected these blues because we can see them there are some blues we cannot see them so i have not included those blues they are very very rare uh, but i will show the photographs later and you can see this common imperial is got a big tail it looks like the short tail but it's a blue it's not a it's not a uh, it's not a uh, other other family this blue Uh, they are called blues basically uh, because most of these butterflies males when they open up their wing their wings have a blue coloration that's why they are called the blues i can show you in the pre my previous slide uh, this like you see this peacock royal which is a blue and the, this having a blue coloration at the uh, top at the four wing and that is that gives it the name of uh, the uh, that family of blues so it is having this beautiful blue color So we have got the imperial, the flagellated, the canara, the sayadi rosy oak blue, the long banded silver line at my left corner, the large four line blue, and the silver sunbeam. We have got a sunbeam which is a city dweller called the Indian sunbeam. is a similar species, uh, the same family, same group is called the Shiva sunbeam, but they are the 
forest butterflies these are some of the my choices of forest forest butterflies found in uh, your uh, our western ghats and especially in karnataka and some forest butterflies of yellows and yellows and white one of the albatross which i have shown here is a chocolate albatross a beautiful butterfly but stays in the forest this looks like a jezebel this butterfly looks like a jezebel but is bigger in size and a little bit difference in the uh, wing pattern when you so compare them closely you'll find the difference uh, and this butterfly is also a river as a river species which come down comes down with albatrosses during mud puddling in the summer season and you will see them then you have got this lesser gull which is another beautiful species of the yellows and whites found in uh, found in the western ghats then you have got the nilgiri grass yellow and the uh, one spot grass yellow these two are uh, they coexist together in the same regions of uh, the river and regions of western ghats they look similar and the id keys it's beyond the scope of this class uh, i have already uh, delivered a talk on blues identification of sorry, butterflies uh, that is on youtube uh, i will share the link if you want uh, that we can then you can, you can witness that to identify these butterflies now uh, there is a dark wanderer and wanderer is also a beautiful common wanderer is uh, basically found in cities the dark wanderer is found in the forest dark wanderer has got a very wide band of black band which is not present in the common wanderer which has got a very thin band now some forest skippers we have got the black angle uh, and we have got this white banded ace we have got the common all we have got the chestnut rat angle and uh, they look like moths this is flat these are some flats and angles they look like moths but since they have got a clubbed antenna with a hook they are butterflies and not moths this is a black angle the white banded ace the common all the uh, sessional angle the full wasp uh, pipe flat the small palm moths are some wonderful skippers uh, which are found in uh, the western but they are commonly seen they are not that rare they are we can still see them in the forest but i am going to come to the uh, next set of butterflies which are scrub forest butterflies scrub forests are basically uh, the dry forests with lot of acacia growth you will see these butterflies there the crimson tips the plain orange tips the little orange tip the white orange tip the large salmon arab the small salmon arab some blues like the bubble blues and lime blues you can find them african bubble blue I have given here there are other two bubble blues also found there in the in the scrub areas and we have got this yellow orange tip these are some examples of the scrub area or the forest which are having lot of acacia plantation lot of capparis because out of this one two three four five of them breed on the same plant capparis the crimson tip the plain orange tip little orange tip and the white orange tip and the and the and the uh, yellow orange tip uh, they are they breed on the same host plant so that's why uh, this scrub areas are dominated by this group of butterflies now some migratory species of butterflies which are uh, found in karnataka uh, you can see them the blue tiger that the common crow the double banded crow the blue tiger and the dark blue tiger the painted lady as i told you in earlier uh, slide that this is the butterfly which is an international migrator this is an international migrator please note it down this comes down from himalayas to the uh, to kanyakumari and it breeds and it goes beyond himalayas and go to other countries also <clears throat> and emigrant is also a local migrant albatross is also a short distant migrant but these three at the top are long distant migrants they come down from western ghats to the eastern ghats and go back to the uh, western uh, western ghats in the uh, post monsoon season now there is a time for this reverse migration when the butterflies go from the eastern ghats to the western ghats some of the rare beauties of karnataka this i wanted to show you because that will create more interest and the challenge to see them uh, i one of them i have seen in my life only one of them and rest five i have not seen so these are in my wish list top left is a lilac silver line and i will uh, uh, i since uh, i am sitting with uh, dignitaries of forest department this butterfly is the pride of bangalore this very rare butterfly was discovered or rediscovered after 100 years at esaragatta lake bed and this is a scheduled two species and this butterfly is found only in a small patch of grassland in esaragatta 
And apart from that, there are very sporadic reports of one or two spe specimens uh, somewhere in Andhra Pradesh and Rajasthan, and in some place in one place in Arunachal Pradesh. This butterfly is so rare, and uh, we have uh, were fortunate to uh, actually uh, see this butterfly, observe it, uh, its ecology, and it's a fascinating butterfly. And uh, uh, I am we are proud that Bangaloreans are proud that we have got. Bangalore has a butterfly of its own that is the lilac silver line. This is a spotted royal. Uh, after this, which looks like something somewhat like common cerulean, but it's not a common cerulean, a spotted royal. It was uh, described way back sometimes in, uh, in the early 19th century by somebody. But people used to laugh that oh, it cannot happen that spotted royal is in uh, Western Guards. Okay, so they thought that spotted royal is only found in the Himalayan regions of or the northeast regions but somewhere in 2011 it was first photographed by one of the young kids who took a, who was just going into the field of butterflies his name is Devek Sarkar he photographed it from uh, uh, from Brahmagiris this is the first photographic documentation of his butterfly from Karnataka and uh, we should be proud about that in western guards it was first seen in Brahmagiris the spotted royal it is a very very rare butterfly and I don't know, I'm having a wish whether I'll be able to see it in my lifetime or not. I have to go and stay at mid elevations of Western Guard, especially in the uh, heights of 700 meters to 1000 meters to see this butterfly. Uh, and then Madikari, Kurg, Bambagiris, these are the areas where we can find this butterfly. This macular lancer is rare because it stays always in the canopy. All those experienced butterfly lovers, they have seen it. Uh, for last 20 years, they have been butterflying and they are series once or twice, not beyond that. Such a rare butterfly. Because it is rare, why it is rare? Because it stays in the canopy and hardly comes down to nectar. And the royal is another very rare butterfly. Recently, one, uh, one of my naturalists from Kerala has observed and documented the life cycle. Before that, nobody has seen the life cycle of this butterfly, the banded royal. It's very such a rare butterfly. It was first reported from Sirsi area of Karnataka. This photo, if you can see, it is from uh, Shimoga district. It was uh, it was photographed. The first photographic record of this butterfly from Karnataka. The spotted royal, as well as, sorry, the silver royal, which is uh, which is another very very <coughs> rare butterfly, which was first photographed uh, from uh, from uh, Sirsi area, the Siddhapur village, by a girl uh, named Netra Bhatt, who gave the first photographic document from. Karnataka, the silver royal. I have not seen this butterfly. Now it is commonly and uh, frequently seen in Tamil Nadu uh, and play that uh, uh, some uh, INR for Raja Palaya it is seen. This other skipper, which is the Indian All King, it is a butterfly which is active during uh, dusk and dawn, and it is called the King, the King of the Skippers, the King of Key Skippers. I have not seen this butterfly, but it is. It is. I have seen its caterpillar, but adult I have not seen this. This butterfly is a butterfly which is found in Western Guards. Such a majestic butterfly we have. Now, this is the list is 334, and I wish that some of you will uh, see them uh, during their lifetime. Till now, I have seen only 300 plus five or plus ten species of butterflies from from Western Guards. Still, I have got about 30 species to see in Western Guards. I have been doing butterfly in the last 12 years, and in 12 years, I could see 300 plus butterflies. That's a big number. I'm very happy and content and satisfied about my observations. Now, butterfly hotspots around uh, Bangalore. As it was mentioned, uh, we have the hosts, which are the Dosana Palia Forest Research Station, Bangalore. This is the place which is an example of how a public private partnership can uh, develop. Uh, a beautiful butterfly forest in the heart of the city. This is the place where uh, the efforts of the Department of Forest of Karnataka and Bangalore Butterfly Club has fruited into a beautiful butterfly park with more than 130 to 140, I don't know the exact number, uh, species of butterflies hosting there. And I have, I'm witness to its growth because I have been visiting that place frequently. We have seen uh, before it was developed into a, a butterfly a forest, a dedicated butterfly forest, 
in summer season we used to see three to four species of butterflies in a day but at any day you go you are assured to see 30 to 40 species of butterflies now this is the situation of Thorosania palea for association because of the efforts done by the uh, Karnataka Forest Department. We have got the Camp GD, which is south of Bangalore, which is a privately owned property state by Mr. Vishnu, and that's also a beautiful butterfly hotspot. Bandagata and Butterfly Park is another place where you can observe butterflies. Where, uh, that's up to you because uh, the Karnataka uh, Forest Department has, it is uh, run by the Jews, I think uh, the Karnataka Jews. And uh, this uh, park is also having a lot of butterflies. Lalbag is another place where you can see butterflies. The Valley School south of Bangalore has got butterflies. The Turahalli Reserve Forest has got a lot of butterflies. The Taman Park, you can see the city butterflies. Bangalore University campus, another beautiful hotspots of butterflies. If you go there, you will be fascinated to see the butterfly diversity. Hasargata Lake Bed has got over 100 species of butterflies. I have personally documented more than 100 species of butterflies from Vesagata Lake, Lake Bed. Out of Bangalore, there are places like Devarayan Durga, Savan Durga, Makli Durga. Uh, Makli Durga is, I should say, mention because this is the first place where we have documented a butterfly called Alida Angle, which has never been reported from Karnataka. This is the first place where we have recently documented the, uh, the Alida Angle, which butterfly is very rarely seen, ill-documented, never documented before butterfly properly. We have been able to photograph and observe the early stages also uh, of this butterfly at Makli Durga Reserve Forest. So these are the hot spot. Please go there, visit these places and enjoy uh, uh, butterflies. Okay, now we can have a butterfly garden. I'm not going to discuss much about this because I will share this slide with my uh, you can see this uh, the video, I think it will be hosted somewhere later on. And you can have a butterfly garden uh, in your vicinity by selecting some uh, some host plants and a mixture of nectar plants, which are locally available. And uh, you can have a lot of butterflies in your backyard. We have a, a butterfly in butterfly, Bangalore Butterfly Club, club called Surumi. Uh, she is a house uh, maker, homemaker, and having a beautiful terrace butterfly garden. And she is reported awesome, rare, and uncommon species from her little space, which she has managed to convert into a butterfly park, butterfly uh, terrace garden. So if you are interested, you can also follow up with uh, developing your own backyard butterfly garden with the uh, information which you can derive from I found butterflies website or uh, the list which I'm providing you. This is a very small list, but you can have a bigger list which is available in uh, various domains uh, like uh, we have got a big paper on uh, the wonder that these plants of western parts by Nitin and uh, fellow authors who have described uh, the host plants for all the species of uh, butterflies uh, which are found in western guards and you can download it from research gate and uh, you can type and on uh, google the host plants of the western guards you'll get, get that link you can download and read that you can use those host plants but before host plants we need the nectar plants because the first thing butterfly love is to come for nectar. Most plants, they are local, they are area selective. They may not come and breed uh, uh, sooner, but you can attract them by nectar plants. Some uh, wonderful books on butterflies. Uh, uh, butterflies of Venezuela, India by Krishnami Kunte. Uh, Book of Indian Butterflies by Isaac Kemker. A field guide to uh, butterflies of Western Ghats. Probably the best book ever made. This one, second book. A guide to the Butterflies of Western Guards is the best profitable book that has been ever made. Uh, and it covers each and every species with all the stages, every documentation possible about the Butterflies of Western Guard. This mammoth work was done by Dr. Milind Bhakare and Hemant Ogle, two naturalists, and uh, they have written one of the best Indian books on Indian butterflies. And there's a book by uh, Arun Pratap Singh, who is a, a uh, who is a, 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 a officer from, I think, uh, Forest uh, Services, uh, IFS, and he has written a wonderful book on Butterflies of India. These are the books available. Uh, there are other books also available, localized books, uh, Butterflies of Pakke, Butterflies of, uh, no, uh, there is Kerala, there are writing Butterflies books, there in Malayalam, of course. Uh, of co and we are also uh, in the process of writing books for, uh, bank. we have got a very good brochure on Bangalore Butterflies. You can click that brochure, it is available. Recently, uh, the Dr. could take and Nitin Ravikan Achari has written a book on Bangalore butterflies, which is available with Forest Department. Soon we are going to get prints of that book, and we can uh, have a copy of that book. It is a, a really a awesome book on butterflies of Bangalore. 
then you can see the website uh, butterflies of india it's also called i found butterflies and uh, there are a list of more than 1000 species of butterflies here with uh, more than 365 species of uh, life cycles and uh, uh, there are pages on uh, host plants and larval, larval larval host plants and nectar plants you can browse this website and you just you know there are more than 90 Four ninety-five thousand images in this particular uh, website you see and the mammoth work it is an effort of citizen science effort done by people like you and me they have contributed their images and we have built a site over the past eight to, uh, to nine years it's a wonderful creation for citizen science or the best of its kind in india even in southwest asia southeast asia rather now how you can engage as a kid as a student how you can engage yourself now, the first step is start observing butterflies by joining a butterfly club or creating your own neighborhood or the institutional butterfly clubs. You can go to your school, uh, you know, you can group uh, the like-minded people, uh, like-minded students and your teacher who is uh, keen about nature and form your butterfly club and you can, you can of course, enjoy uh, watching butterflies. Now, and, and second step is to put down your observation in a field guide diary. Always have maintain a field diary and you see what color you see because initially you will not be having awareness about uh, which butterfly is that. But you try to draw the butterfly and then you try to take some notes about the size, shape of the wings, patterns, all those things. You can note down uh, and then you can take a, about, uh, about a gross picture of the butterfly. Okay. And then uh, you can ask the experts uh, to uh, learn more about butterflies. There are experts, Bangalore Butterfly has got a uh, lot of experts who are there ready to help you uh, without uh, expecting anything from you. Uh, they will help you if you contact them. We have got, uh, you know, uh, Hanish, we have got Rohit Girotra, Mr. Nagraj. There are people, uh, the, the, the people who are very good in butterfly, uh, Mr. Firoz, uh, there are people like us uh, who, who can help you to understand and learn about butterflies. Now you read butterfly books. That also is a very good thing. You must have at least one book with you, which will help you to understand butterflies. Of course, and then start serious documents of butterflies with under the guidance of experts. Start documenting them. By for that, you have to contact an expert, and uh, we are there to guide you. Start documenting butterflies. Uh, we will provide you the Excel sheets to uh, you know help you to you know uh, uh, note, uh, note down. Uh, how to document the butterflies and create checklists and uh, the, that is uh, uh, that is daily uh, population dynamics and all those things can be documented uh, day wise reports hour wise reports all everything is possible this is a process which are which we are following for the last so many years then next is if you have can afford get a camera if it is not your mobile is sufficient nowadays good mobiles are coming and they can take a good picture of a butterfly good enough to take a photograph of a butterfly so, and then contribute your photographs to the portals like Butterflies of India, that is the Indian Foundation of Butterflies, then iNaturalist and India Biodiversity. You can con contribute this, uh, your, your observations, and your observation will be noted, and it will be preserved, and you'll be credited for your observation. And last but not the least, if you are too keen about butterflies, then you take up bioscience as your career, and be an entomologist or a lepidopterist. Which will be, you know, which will be kind of fulfilling your dreams to understand and learn about butterflies. These are the steps. You can take any one of the steps. You can have a combination of these, uh, you know, uh, steps, or no one is sufficient. Now, thank you, students, and uh, 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 we. I end it. End up with a quote. Uh, we delight in the beauty of butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through the through to achieve that beauty. By Maya. And uh, with this, I come to the end of my uh, session. I would uh, take up questions now, if you have. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ashok Sen Gupta. And uh, it was really uh, very well drafted and uh, well presented, uh, uh, this thing. It was the uh, sequencing of the events was very good. Actually, I must say that uh, the young participants who actually they want they have a lot of questions because we have created two partitions in this webinar to avoid uh, inter in interventions uh, in between the presentation. So only the uh, uh, panelists can only talk right now. But we, whenever we can allow the people on the chat box, the questions are all coming in the chat box. Some of them are already there. 
and uh, many questions will be i think they will start posing the questions on the chat box and we can see from the chat box and answer the questions uh, by the uh, participants over here uh, in fact uh, uh, already i can say there are a few questions like what is a uh, uh the skipper butterfly i already uh, answered it in our presentation only so i i, I hope that uh, the student who asked the question already got it answer also and uh, next is uh, the ppt uh, they uh, want to they want to uh, the kids want to have the copy of the ppt if you can share this to us sure, and sure. It, we will put it on our website also and the people will be happy to uh, you know go through once again and they can uh, have a bit more idea and go again I, I'm sure that there is a uh, word of uh, information with you, and uh, we need to. We don't. Yes, time is actually limitation, and uh, we cannot cover every aspect of butterflies uh, over the session of uh, one one hour or so. Maybe uh, I'm very thankful to you for uh, uh, accepting our invitation and uh, uh, doing a very uh, uh, very dutiful job. And uh, just the subject you have done it, and. Uh, uh actually uh in the initially we were supposed to yeah uh in, in between we have we had sd uh, patak saab was supposed to be the keynote uh, address deliver uh somehow we lost him again uh, i thought i will give an opportunity sir uh, to speak over uh, but uh, so time is exceeding so we will not uh, waste time i take this opportunity to thank you and uh, and i will uh, ask ce uh, uh, personnel uh to intervene now and uh, the quiz session will start immediately uh, before that if there are any questions unanswered in the quest chat box and if any anyone are, want to ask more questions they can put on the chat box we'll uh, the speaker will be happy to answer thank you very much once again uh, we'll have the next uh, session i invite uh, george vargis thank you okay good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i see a lot of uh, uh, kids uh we eagerly waiting to participate in the quiz i see a lot of uh, uh, kids from the previous uh, while in our sessions also been present so before uh, we go on to the quiz i I'll, i'll share my ppt one minute okay man okay so i hope everybody can see the uh, ppt i'll just go to the rules now of the seventh online webinar online quiz on butterflies okay the rules of the quiz i think many of them are many of you are aware of it uh, it remains the same you need to answer only in the chat box the question answer to the question you need to answer only in the chat box you have to select um chat box you have to select only to panelist not to attendees or any private uh, this thing only to panelist you have to select i hope everybody is clear about that if you put it put your answer in any other box other than uh, panelist uh, your answer will not be displayed in our system right and uh, no voice answers will be considered so there is no option of you know you giving the answer by voice which will not be again uh, encouraged or you won't be qualified for prizes the total number of questions is 15 mostly of visuals uh you have 30 seconds for answering each question in the chat box again i'll repeat only in the uh, uh, chat box only to the panelist okay master's correct answer will be declared winner uh, like you know the idea is you should be if you are uh, alert in the presentation most of the questions will be from the presentation dr sen gupta had uh, you know earlier uh, spoken about so the questions will be from there most of them will be from there uh, winners will, winners of the particular questions will be announced in the by the organizers following this they'll have to share your full name email id and mobile number without fail so we will announce after each question whoever has answered it first we will announce the answer uh, name and following which you need to give your full name email id and mobile number uh, for you to get the certificate and prizes 
winners will be issued a e certificate by the karnataka forest department and then whoever answers maximum questions and gave maximum points will be declared as the overall winner and eligible for a mega prize from the forest department which will be given during the wildlife week celebration scheduled to happen in the first week of october so you are clear so shall we go i repeat again please uh, answer uh, answer only to the panelists in the chat box so there is an option to select that two it is written there you need to select to all panelists the answers will be displayed only there if you have sent it to attendees or in other any other uh, room it will not be displayed okay so i hope everything is clear so let's move on to the first question how many stages do butterflies have in their life cycle let's see a lot of answers coming Three, four, two, six. Times up. That's the answer. There are four stages. Four stages for a typical life cycle for a butterfly, starting with the egg, larva, pupa, which is again called a chrysalis, and the adult butterfly. It will emerge as an adult butterfly. Let's see the. Let's see who's answered it correctly. Shuti Patna has answered it correctly. Congratulations, Shuti. Shuti, uh, congratulations! Please share your full name, email ID, and phone number. Shuti Patnai, congrats. Let's move on. How many species of butterflies are there in the Western Ghats? This is also very easier uh, questions. How many species of butterflies are found in the Western Ghats? Documented. Let's see all kind of numbers: thirty-five, three twenty-six, three twenty-five, three thirty-four, three thirty-four. All kind of numbers. Let's move on to the answer. Yes, uh, 334 species of butterflies have been documented from the Western Ghats. This was again uh, told uh, by our speaker earlier. If you are very alert, you could have got this answer correctly. 334 species of butterfly uh, are uh, recorded from the Western Ghats. Many of them are also found in Karnataka part of the Western Ghats. <laughs> Jay Sharma has answered it correctly. Congrats, Jay Sharma. Uh, please uh, give your full name. Email ID and phone number, please. Thank you. Let's move on. What is the study of butterflies called? What is the study of butterfly called? Let's move on. The doctorology is the. Answer: It is a branch of entomology concerning the scientific studies of butterfly and moth. It is a branch of branch of uh, entomology dealing with Leptoptera. So the correct answer is Leptoptrology. Samarth is answered it correctly. Samarth S is answered it correctly. Congrats, uh, Samarth. Please give your full name, email ID, phone number. The chat box. Thank you. Let's move on. The process of transformation of a caterpillar to an adult butterfly is called what? Process of transformation of a caterpillar to adult butterfly is called what? Only a few people have given it uh, correctly. Let's move on to the answer. Answer is metamorphosis. It's a Greek word that uh, tells about the transformation or change. Insect have uh, two kind of metamorphosis. Grasshopper, crickets, dragonflies, and cockroaches have incomplete metamorphosis. So, but butterflies tend to undergo a process called metamorphosis, emerging from pupa, uh, egg, pupa, uh, pupa, larvae, pupa, and the adult. So, answer is metamorphosis. Correct answer was given by Samarth. Again, is uh, given the correct answer. So, Samarth is leading now with the two points. Congrats, Samarth. Please give your. I hope you have given your email ID and uh, phone number. Let's move on. Which family of butterflies are known to show symbiosis with ants? This was again an easy question, which was also highlighted in the presentation earlier. Which family of butterflies are known to show symbiosis with ants? Which family of butterflies are known to show the symbiosis with ants? Let's see the answer.
Yeah, nice three day or the blues family. If you answer either of these, you will get the point. The caterpillars of blues, fab, uh, blues develop special gland that they secrete a nectar like substance to attract ants. By day, the caterpillars are protected from predators by the ants. So that's why they have the symbiosis uh, uh, association they have, the Lysity Day or the Blues family. Let's see who's answered it correctly. Apurva Sharda. Apurva Sharda, you had, uh, answered it correctly first. Congrats, please give your full name, email ID, and phone number. So let's move on. Which country in the world has, has recorded as the largest number of butterfly species? Which country in the world has uh, the largest number of butterfly species? You want the country, not the continent. I see a lot of people giving continents. All kind of country, Costa Rica, India, many of them have given India. Let's see the answer. Okay, we'll give a few more seconds. I want the country, not the region. Okay, let's see the answer. Peru in South America is known to record the largest number of butterfly species. Almost 4,357 butterfly species have been recorded, which accounts for about 20% of the world's total uh, known recorded species of butterfly. Uh, the butterflies have, are still not vastly under recorded. It is estimated that there are more than 4,800 which will be eventually declared, uh, discovered. So let's see who has answered it correctly. Shruti Patnaik, you have answered it correctly. Congrats. I think, in fact, uh, we have been told by our uh, group members that uh, she is the only person who stole the correct answer in the number of uh, response we got. Okay, congrats to Shruti. We move on. Shruti and uh, Samarth is uh, tied up with two, two points. Let's move on. Identify this butterfly species. Hello. I hear you. I got the hearing. Good thing. Okay, let's go on. Answer is common banded peacock, which is also told by our speaker, eminent yes. speaker. Uh, it's a species of solitary butterfly found mainly in the Indian subcontinent, including. Nepal, Bhutan, and uh, Sri Lanka. This butterfly is solitary and fast flyer. It flies above and forages on the trees. So you can see a prominent, it has got two prominent uh, eye spot and the hind wings. Um, so the answer is common banded peacock. Let's see who's answered it correctly first. Nishil George has answered it correctly. Congratulations, Nishil. Uh, please give your full name, email ID, and phone number, please. Nishil George has answered it correctly. Let's move on. Butterfly caterpillar is known to be the pest on banana plantation in South India. This was again shared by our remnant speaker earlier. Which butterfly is known to be a pest on banana plantation in South India? Okay, we move on. Rounded palm red eye. This is the correct answer. The, this pillar, this cat, uh, butterfly caterpillar has re recently invaded uh, southern India and has caused massive damage to banana plantation in the southern states of uh, India. The uh, caterpillar cuts and rolls the banana leaves and eats them voraciously. This is uh, very much uh, 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 not described in detail by our speaker earlier. So if you are very alert, you could have got this answer. The answer is rounded palm red eye. Uh, if you are not given the full uh, full name, at least if you are given uh, the round. Apurva, Apurva is given, Apurva Sharda is given full. Okay. Apurva Sharda is given. So our uh, research person has told Apurva Sharda because we are not got the full, full answer. Apurva Sharda, congrats. Uh, please give your full name, email ID, and phone number. Okay. Let's move on. Name the state butterfly of Karnataka. I think this uh, everybody should answer. Name the state butterfly of Karnataka. I'll move on. 
nursery southern bird wing uh, why it has been uh, chosen as the karnataka state butterfly is because of its colors which match with the colors of the karnataka flag butterfly is the largest butterfly in india with females growing up to 190 mm in length that's why it's called a bird wing primarily endemic to south india it is found in abundance in karnataka especially in the western ghats so southern bird wing is the correct answer let's see who is answered it correctly first bsh bsh somebody by, somebody by name psh has logged it and given the correct answer we don't know the full name so please uh, give the to give your full name if you want to get your certificate if you just uh, don't respond by the, not just uh, by giving bsh you will not be able to send you the prize and certificate so please give your full name email id and phone number bsh let's move on then the butterfly which has the longest migration in the world this also was uh, discussed by our uh, resource person earlier which is the name the butterfly which has the longest migration in the world this is all kind of fancy blue tiger painted lady monarch okay let's see the answer and painted lady butterfly is known to have the longest migrate migrating butterfly ever recorded uh, the many of the species are known to record across continents uh, across continents there are many of them uh, seen uh, very commonly in india also this butterfly as uh, our resource person has told it's uh, many of the species come to india also from uh, visit india also so, so the correct answer is painted lady butterfly niranjana dage has answered it correctly congrats niranjana Please give, share your email ID, full name, and phone number, please. Where is the first butterfly park located in India? Where is the first butterfly park located in India? You should write the name of the park, not the place. You should write the name of the park. Where is the first butterfly park located in India? Let's see the answer. The answer is Bandaragata National Park. This was established in the year. Butterfly park was established in the year 2004. The entire park has been established over an acre of 7.5 acres with a butterfly trail of about 1 kilometer. A study has reported about 48 species of butterfly in various seasons at Bandaragata National Biological Park. So the answer is Bandaragata National Park. Okay, let's see who's answered it correctly first. Okay, so supply because many of them are uh, given the name of uh, Bangalore, but uh, now we were looking for the name of the park. So so supply has given the correct answer. Congratulations, so uh, please uh, give your full name, email ID, and uh, phone number. Thank you. Let's move on. Identify this beautiful butterfly. Identify this beautiful butterfly. I get, I see a lot of uh, different different answers. Let's see the answer now. The answer is blue marmon. It's the second largest in size among all butterflies, second only to the southern bird wing. So the answer is blue marmon. Uh, as you can see, it has got velvet like black wing with bright blue spots. Found uh, commonly in Sri Lanka, Western Ghats, of Maharashtra, and the coastal belts of India. So blue marmon is, is the correct answer. Let's see who's answered it correctly. Purva Sharda has answered it correctly. Congrats, Purva Sharda. You may please give your full name, email ID, and the, the phone number. Next question is, do butterfly larvae form a cocoon, true or false? Do butterfly larvae form a cocoon, true or false? Very straightforward question. Let's see the answer. It is false. Butterfly larvae forms on, uh, larvae only forms chrysalis, and moth larvae forms cocoon over its pupae. So the answer is false. Let's see who has answered it correctly. Samarth S has answered it correctly. Congratulations, Samarth. 
Sambartes uh, uh, is leading with three points now, followed by Shruti Patnaik. Purva Sharda and Shruti Patnaik is tied up with two points. So, Samarth is leading this uh, online quiz on butterflies. Let's move on. How many states in India has declared state butterfly? Sir, as uh, previously showed, how many states in India has declared state butterflies? I see a lot of answers correct, coming correctly. Let's see the answer. Five states have, you know, have their own state butterfly, Maharashtra, Uttarakhand, Karnataka, Kerala, and Tamil Nadu. Maharashtra was the first uh, state to officially declare blue marmot as a state butterfly way back in uh, 2015, followed by Uttarakhand, their state butterfly is common peacock, and Karnataka, uh, southern birdwing, Kerala, uh, Malabar banded peacock, and Tamil Nadu, Tamil Yeoman is the state butterfly. So five states have declared so far uh, as their state butterflies. Let's see who's answered it correctly. Nishil George has answered it correctly. Congratulations, Nishil. Uh, please share your email ID and phone number, please. Thank you. What is this behavior called in butterflies? You can see a lot of butterflies uh, sitting on a bundle of slush. So, what is this behavior called in butterflies? Very, very interesting answers. Let's move, let's see the answer. Answer is mud puddling. Mud puddling or simply puddling is a behavior most see, commonly seen in butterflies, mainly insects. They seek out nutrients in certain moist uh, substances such as mud, rotting plant, and they suck up the fluid. By sipping moisture from the mud, uh, mud puddles, butterfly take in salts and minerals from the soil. So the correct answer is mud puddling. Let's see who's answered it correctly. How many of them have given mud puddling? You just say select the best. Shruti Patnaik has given it correctly. Shruti Patnaik, mud puddling is the correct answer. Please share your email ID and phone number in the chat box. Okay, let's move on. It is the smallest butterfly species found in India. This is again uh, seen. Uh, Okay, let's move on to the correct answer. Oriental grass jewel or black spotted grass jewel is the correct answer. Let's see, this is the smallest butterfly which you can be easily seen in South India. Uh, let's see who's answered it correctly. Huh? Apurva Sharda has uh, answered it correctly. Congratulations, Apurva. Please share your email ID, full name, and phone number. A newly emerged butterfly ca can't fly immediately, true or false? Newly emerged butterfly can't fly immediately, true or false? Let's see the answer. True. The newly emerged butterfly cannot fly immediately. Uh, inside the pupa, the developing butterfly waits to emerge with its, with, with its wings collapse around its body. Finally, it breaks out. Free from the pupil case, grease the world with tiny and shivered wings. The butterfly must immediately pump body fluid through its vein, wing veins to expand. Once it reach, uh, its wings reach the full size, butterfly must rest for a few hours to allow its body to dry and harden. Only then it can take the first fly. So the correct answer is true. Let's see who's answered it correctly. Apurva Sharda has answered it correctly. Congratulations, Apurva. Please, I hope you shared your email ID and uh, phone numbers earlier. With this, uh, we come to the end of the quiz. So, uh, nice uh, uh, proverb. They just when a caterpillar thought the world was over, it became a butterfly. So, we, uh, we just take a minute to ask the winners of this uh, online quiz. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I okay, the win I'll just quickly uh, uh, announce the winners Apurva Sharda and Shruti Patnaik. You have uh, got the first prize jointly. Give them a big hand. 
Thank you very much, uh, George Varghese. Actually, it was a lively discussion and a lively uh, questioning. Uh, actually, it was uh, the kids had a very uh, enthusiastic participation all over. And uh, congratulations to the winners, Apurva Sharda uh, and uh, Samarth and uh, Shruti Patnayak and all of this. And uh, there are many questions you must be having. You can directly post to the uh, uh, speaker, uh, maybe through email. You will be share. You will be shared on the network in, in our website also. This this all entire program was recorded and it was even live on the YouTube and uh, Facebook channel of the department. And the same information will also be available on our uh, uh, website in future. And um, we have already overshoot that time. It was uh, supposed to end at 5:30. We shot uh, started by one hour, and uh, but it was really wonderful. Actually, uh, just a clarification from my side, sir. Actually, with uh, Ashok Sen Gupta, uh, because uh, recently in the month of June, July, I remember somewhere. Himalayan uh, gold wing butterfly was uh, uh, overtaken the southern uh, bird wing as a uh, largest butterfly. I think by four centimeters or so. Is that fact is uh, verified or still to be verified? One. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I will. I can answer it for for everybody if you if you give permit me. Yeah. I can answer this question. See, anomalies are everywhere in uh, in nature. Anomaly cannot be considered to be. It can be a record, but it can be cannot be treated as a, a, a yardstick. Yeah. So yeah. I have okay. seen. I, I have seen a blues, uh, a tiny grass blue growing smaller than uh, your grass jewel because of aberration. Okay, it was that was not a general. As, yeah. as yardsticks. Okay. Okay, because it was uh, recently reported in a popular news, news uh, newspaper and other channels also. This. Uh, this is recorded and uh, been uh, Himalayan golden wing has uh, taken over uh, southern wing is that that uh, title has been <laughs> yeah. so that uh, that's I uh, that should be the it should be clarified to the participant here so still uh, southern bird wing uh, continues to be the largest butterfly uh, in India so that's good and uh, actually uh, one of the one wonderful uh, series that we had we are going through that is a series of nine webinars. This was one of the liveliest uh, of all the webinars, I can say. Uh, thanks to the resource person who made it very wonderful uh, and uh, excellent information shared. Benefit, I think, all of us, uh, and including uh, us, it was a uh, brushing for fact for many of us, uh, even for me also. Uh, studied long back uh, during the graduation days, the, all this uh, entomology and uh, uh, the, all these things and now uh, i would uh, say this to let's conclude the session of the webinar next uh, week we'll again catch up with uh, another interesting topic uh, that is a uh, uh, marine uh, life aquatic ecosystem and conservation of the ecosystem basically uh, we'll be we are trying to focus it on the conservation of the dolphin uh, uh, which are very important for the aquatic life and uh, we are uh, in karnataka we are in uh, process of uh, and declaring a marine national park uh, where, where, where in the process we are trying to declare it and uh, in near Karwar area. So that's uh, we are taking that topic for the coming week. And uh, I thank once again uh, the uh, our guest key, keynote uh, address was delivered this time today by even though ST Patak sir joined in between, he could not again uh, continue with us. Uh, Malkade sir who delivered on behalf of ST Patak sir and if ST Patak sir could not participate here. Uh, but I, I must say that uh, Karnataka Forest Government, uh, uh, the wing uh, for research and utilization wing at Dorsani uh, every year organizes butterfly uh, festival. And uh, our, the, currently, SD Patak sir is heading the uh, wing, and we were interested to know about his uh, uh, views on this uh, butterfly festival as well. So we missed his uh, uh, views this time. Anyway, we'll be uh, sharing his uh, views maybe next time, maybe uh, you know, or the YouTube and all. 
so thank you uh, sir um, uh, history patak sir and malkade sir for uh, the keynote address and then uh, especially special thanks to ashok sen gupta for uh, uh, being be with us and uh, with in a short notice he made a very wonderful uh, uh, presentation on to all the and uh, there if there are any questions please uh, go, uh, go directly get in touch with dr ashok sen gupta and uh, even post to the questions to us also we'll uh, get back to you with, with answers again and uh, thanks to uh, ce uh, all the officials uh, uh, santosh manoj uh, sorry santosh manjunath uh, george and all that they were taking a wonderful uh, key interest in uh, setting up this uh, webinar and making it a successful event so far and uh, now uh, we are uh, the social so media wing of the forest government uh, i would like to thank uh, chura singh sir and his team for uh, supporting with us to take to the, the next level of uh, broadcasting of the, our uh, webinar series uh, thank you once again uh, i will uh, see you in the next webinar series uh, thank you thank you anurag we just come to the end thank you very much thank you sir